Welcome to Three Skulls Tavern, a channel devoted to tabletop role-playing games by Free League Publishing. This show is sponsored by Foundry, the virtual tabletop, as well as Worldmill, online server hosting for the Foundry tabletop. To support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt K. For a minimum of $2 per month, you get access to a ton of extra content. We didn't think we'd make it out. This was going to be the last battle of the war, and it seemed like our luck to be the war's last official victims. Not that anyone would know, of course. They hadn't had accurate casualty records for the last year. If we still had anyone alive back home, they wouldn't have any way of knowing we'd bought it outside some town in Poland they couldn't pronounce. One of the tank commanders said this was the superpowers' last gasp, taking one final stab at each other. She painted some quote from Moby Dick on the side of her Abrams. With my last breath, I stab at thee. The madness was right there in her eyes. The real action happened outside Kalish, though we only ever saw the town through binoculars. The Soviets drove a wedge right through 5th Division like a knife through butter. We were a raggedy ass division, half of us on horseback or foot, vehicles running off distilled alcohol, Uniforms mended, then mended again, and half of those from other units, if not other NATO countries. The Ruskies ripped right through us, split us in two, then encircled both elements. Hardened troops broke, headed for the woods, got the hell out of Dodge. Some crazy-ass colonel tried to lead a charge on horseback, getting his horse up on its hind legs like the Lone Ranger, and screaming how this was Custer's last stand. Shit. I was almost relieved when a Soviet mortar took him out his pearl-handled 45 landing a meter away, with the hand still attached. It was the horse that got the short end of that stick, really. Bullets zipped around like mosquitoes on the river back home, popping the way they did when they got too near those electric zappers. It almost made you homesick. And how the hell was I thinking about that in the middle of all this anyway? Probably my life scrolling before my eyes. I took one in the gut and thought, roll credits. But the ceramic plate absorbed the worst of it. Knocked the wind right out of me. Then someone scooped me up, threw me in a jeep, and hauled ass south. Stragglers jumped aboard as best they could. One of them didn't quite have a grip and fell right off. I saw a horse trample him in the rear view. That was when the radio static briefly became clear. Someone on the other end, screaming that HQ was being overrun. The last order from the top to make a break for it. Like we weren't already. Then, that final message that hung there in the jeep, like the worst news in a hospital waiting room. Good luck, you're on your own. Unmuting the mic this time. Hello and welcome to Twilight 2000. Our episode one for our co-op campaign. I'm joined by Tony. Hey, Tony. Hello. And yeah, we're... um. We're a little bit nervous. <laughs> um, well, I am at least. Um, I've just got in the chat, someone's asking what happened to the Southern accent. I'd recorded um, that intro originally with something more of a, a Southern drawl or a bit of a Appalachian drawl. Um, but listening back to it, I kept cringing and the idea of actually having to do that live uh, wasn't very exciting. So I'm gonna, I've kind of, kind of ditched that Appalachian accent. I'm just gonna go maybe slightly American. Um, I did grow up in the States, so I, I can kind of do a little bit of one if I really need to, but it's been a long time since I lived there. Anyway, if you haven't watched it yet and you're watching this after our live stream, um, we did do a session zero for this, which is about two hours long. Um, there will be a description uh, link for it in the description if you want to go and watch that. That basically talks us through character creation and talking about foundry and solo gaming, etc. Um, not necessarily solo gaming. Obviously, there's two of us, but we are not playing with the GM. So this is this is co-op. Um, yeah. How's the music, by the way? If someone can let us know in the chat if the music is a little bit too loud. It's coming through quite hot, uh, quite loud in my in my um, headphones. Um, but yeah, anyway, 
here we are, episode one. Uh, we'll do a very, very quick introduction of our characters. I'll zoom in on our portraits over on the side. Tony, if you want to start. Yes, so we'll be starting. So I'm playing a character uh, that is called Bill Wilson. Uh, he did uh, several careers. And as you can see from an episode one, he was first in the military and he became a tanker. Then after that, he moved into special operations and was promoted to a staff surgeon. Uh, I think usually, I, I can't remember now if it was one year, no, more or less. Well, one it depends on the, the role. But And then he moved into education, doing more something about sciences. So he left the military career. And then he came back as an agent. So basically in one of the intelligence uh, agencies and basically trained to be a ranger. And after that, basically, when the battle started here in Poland, uh, he decided to join back and he was called, like uh, many other people. And he became a trainer uh, for one of the divisions, so the one that we are part of, the five, fifth mechanized division. Uh, you know, I was training some of the characters, well, some of the uh, soldiers in, in this division and up to Matt's character. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm playing uh, Rick Newsom. Uh, Rick is 20, oh, what did I say he was, 25? Oh man, there's no, anyway, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere around 25, mid-20s anyway. Um, I only managed to do two um, tours in the um, character creation, both in the US Army. Um, so went through kind of general training and then I went through um, some of this, one of the specialist no, it wasn't quite specialist. I think it was combat combat support um, mm. tours. And yeah, I, I got up to the rank of corporal and then war broke out and here I am. So I kind of started off, I uh, came from a privileged background, which means I know how to ride a horse, which is a bit interesting. Um, and my other, my other kind of specialties or talents as they're called in this game are psyops, which make me good at manipulation and riflemen, which make me um, good with a rifle or with rifles. Um, my stats, I didn't really want, I kind of wanted to play this in a way where I was kind of good across the board, a jack of all trades, because I, th I think that's going to make our lives maybe a little bit easier in, um, a small group like we are, like we're playing. So as you can see from the screen there, all of my attributes are rank B, which basically means I get a D10 for all of them when I'm rolling them. Um, and I have... A number of skills that look fairly soldiery, really. Um, yeah, I'm I'm here in Poland because that's where I was. Uh, that's where I'm stationed. I'm I'm with the um, fifth. Oh boy. <laughs> fifth mechanized division. Fifth mechanized. Yeah, I'm gonna get these wrong. I'm gonna mix these up all the time. We have fifth mechanized infantry. So I'm with the fifth mechanized. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll we'll talk in a minute about like what's just happened prior to starting the game. But this is this is my character. I've got an M16A2 um, assault rifle, so the kind of you know what I typically associate with the um, you know 80s American uh, soldiers. You know the M16. What what's the weapon you're rocking? You've got a pistol, right? So I have two. I have a pistol uh, M9 that came basically with my oh, character as, yeah. a, as an agent, and then because we also had some some extra gear that we could take as a group. I took the sniper rifle. Yeah. I mean, uh, as you remember, I was trying to come, that we would become the sniper team. <laughs> so when, when yeah. we had the chance to get an M21, I was like, yes, I'm getting the M21. <laughs> yeah, you were quite you were quite keen. That was fine, yeah. Um, we're also starting with a Jeep. It's an optional thing that um, characters can start with. Uh, it's usually a GM's decision, but we thought as well, because we are just the two of us, to give us a little bit of a leg up um, at the start. We've still got a Jeep, and I think we have a half, was it one full tank or half a tank of um, half a tank. of gas? Gas being um, booze, <clears throat> so all the, all the um, vehicles run on alcohol. If you've not seen this show before, this channel before, just to let you know, um, this is much less focused on acting and pure role playing we actually will slow things down and talk about mechanics talk about the game as much as possible when we need to talk about it that way people who are watching can also learn the kind of learn the rules as we go along um and just a bit of housekeeping there as well 
a lot of the live streams are about two hours long on this channel. We're going to aim for this one to be an hour, at least for the start. Uh, just because it's a little bit more mentally taxing to do solo and small group co-op. Because you're having to do a lot of different things and you get tired a little bit quicker. So we're going to we're gonna start with an hour today and it might be that if we, f if we feel like we're getting into a groove, we might stretch it out a little bit in future. Um, and we're going to be doing this every two weeks-ish. So... Let's get started. <laughs> you ready, Tony? Yes, let's go. Um, just a very <sighs> quick thing as well. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen, uh, I should point, maybe point that way. Oh man, I don't know which way I'm pointing here. That way, yeah. <laughs> um, there are a bunch of macros at the bottom of this. If you're not familiar with Foundry, this basically lets me click on any of these once and it will roll um, a macro, which is like a um, an automated program and they do various different things. Um, so to help with solo play, we have a bunch of uh, solo play oracles in here. There are some missing that will be coming in uh, in future. So if we do need to use some things like, the, we don't have to do the critical tables yet. We don't have the travel mishaps yet. So those will be going in before, hopefully before our next session. But anyway, um, let's have a look at the map here. So we're in Poland, and as you can see here, there is a, this is central Poland. Uh, we have Warsaw up here, we have Krakow down here. The Polish border roughly runs, like with my mouse here, along the bottom edge here. Um, you've got Czech Republic down on this side. Anyway, and we are on this, um, where this Three Skulls icon is, near the town of Kalish. Now Kalish had just had a major offensive, uh, which didn't go so well. Um, and as you can see here, there is an icon for this blue icon here is for the fifth, uh, the fifth mechanized infantry division, which I'm, uh, which we're both, well, I was a part of specifically. Um, well, I would have bumped into Bill, I guess, shortly, shortly after as we were fleeing. Um, so I guess that's kind of up to Bill, uh, up to, up to Tony to decide exactly what, what Bill was doing around college at the time. Um, I think we, as we said, I think I was mentoring some of the soldiers, and we were supposed to have met before. Uh, were you mentoring point. them like during a combat? Um... Yeah, I think I was kind of a combat trainer. We, we said that, uh, you know, because I, I had all these special skills as a, as a intelligence agent that I was training probably for survival or maybe Russian, because I'm also a linguist, and I actually okay. can speak Russian to a, to a very good level that almost like uh, with no accent. So maybe I was, uh, the idea was like I was mentoring some of the soldiers and probably we met before. And then during the offensive that the, the, the division got dispersed, somehow I managed to grab a jeep. And then I was trying to get any stragglers as they could and jump in at some point and surprise, we already knew from before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, we did this in session zero, determined exactly where we're going to be. We rolled a d6, because there's six positions on the hex, starting with one at the top and going around clockwise. And we rolled a four, which means we're starting in the southernmost hex. That's how we decided it. Um, one of the things we're supposed to do in solo play... In the, so, actually, the, the game does have solo guidelines in the back of it. One of the things it suggests is you set a goal for yourselves at the start of your game. And if you make it to that goal, then that's the end of your first your first solo game. Um, and then if you decide you want to keep playing, then you set a new objective and you go and follow that one. So reading through the kind of um, the various documentation that comes with the game to find out what the situation is on the ground, um, one of the things that happens right before where we are right now is that the U.S. troops start pulling, and the NATO troops as well, um, largely start pulling back west towards the German border. Um, so I think from my perspective as a soldier, I'm probably keen to also do that. Um, so my thinking was the first goal is to try and make it west, maybe not right to the German border, which is basically off the map, but maybe we can say like the last position of third corps uh, headquarters, which is this um, this flag with the, with the kind of um, Roman numeral three next to it. That was the site of our headquarters. Um, maybe to make it back there because it's quite close to the German uh, border. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, sounds good to me. And if we set I mean, some smaller, um, you were talking about setting some smaller um, like waypoints, waypoints. Yeah. along the way. So I think that makes sense. So if we if we kind of assume that we're going to be following this um, this road to the south because we're heading south from Kalish, 
uh, then maybe we can, maybe our first thing can be to um, get some supplies in Kepno, and then head to the ruins of Rokla, and then from there head up the road to um, to the headquarters. Good Something like that. The, the idea that I also had was try to see if we can find more information about the other divisions and try to hit the, the spots that we know more or less we used to be or, or we had some troops localized. And uh, just to regroup, because at this moment uh, it's only us two, and then uh, that's it. And we don't have a lot of <laughs> a lot of resources with us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what, what we didn't discuss is actually because it just says you start in this point. It's like uh, uh, because all these all these decisions that we're making now is something that we should do when we stop because we are, we are already running away from Kalitz, or let's say that we already stop in the first. Sure. Shift. We don't. Sure. I don't even know which shift we are actually. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, we're, we're fleeing to the south, right? Yeah. I think uh, the idea is that we, we have some information at our disposal, like this map. Um, the icons on this map are out of date. They're from mid-April, and mm -hmm. I believe we're meant to be playing in July at the moment. Um, okay. So, yeah, that means the the data, like... This, these like these positions of the Russian troops, the Soviet troops, the American troops, mm. um, the NATO troops, the Polish troops, etc., might be a little bit out of date, um, but they're kind of last known positions. So I think um, that's worth bearing in mind. Um, we do have this. This is the fifth mechanized infantry um, division here, right below us. So we were thinking. Um, I mean, I don't want to fixate too much on these positions on the map. They're kind of there just to make it look pretty. <laughs> um, and to give us a very, very rough idea of like what sort of troops might be in the area. But there might be some stragglers from the 5th um, down south. So, yeah, I think everyone was kind of fleeing from Kalish. There were definitely going to be people heading in that, di that direction. Um, and let's start there. Okay. Um, there is There was a discussion about starting with a... Um, starting with an encounter where you're getting away from basically if you remember our actual our twilight 2000 game that we played on the channel we started yeah. like that as yeah. we were getting away from i think it was even from college or maybe it was from loge was, i can't yeah. remember exactly i think we had that first fight in college remember that we're, we're I, it was definitely it was somewhere I, was it college yeah um so. yeah anyway um but i think because it's just the two of us i think we'll just say we're well, you know we're in our jeep we've made it to the we've made it to the edge of this forest um, and now we're kind of at this forest, and the jeep can't really go through a, th a forest like uh, thick trees. So we have to make a decision what we're going to do. Uh, one thing to talk about as well is the weather. <laughs> uh, we did roll. I'll show the chat log um, to determine. Oh, you've cleared it. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, so to determine what the weather is going to be, uh, the GM normally decides that in advance. We don't have a GM, so we decided to roll a d6. Um, on a two through five, the weather would be cloudy, which is kind of the default position. On a six, it would be fair weather, and on a one, it would be bad weather, like heavy rain, etc. And we rolled a one. So it's raining heavily, uh, visibility is not great, and that's how we're starting the game. Um, so, we're talking shifts so, as well. I think maybe we start in the... Uh, yeah, we have morning, afternoon, evening. Let's start uh, with like at night. noon time, maybe. That makes maybe a bit of sense. So we've got like... You know, we've got one... We've got the day shift available. Then we've got the yeah. evening shift. And then it, it heads into the night. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, because actually the evening and the night shifts are considered that you have not out of light. Uh, while the first two shifts, you sh we should have enough light. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the question is, what are we? Are we going to ditch the jeep? Are we going to ditch a jeep to head south? Are we going to keep the jeep and head cross country to the east to try and get to that road? Well, uh, well, the issue with the jeep is that it's it's noisy, so we are much more easily seen. But it also allows us to try to move faster, even on the off road. We should still be able to move. So I think we should try to keep it as long as we can. Uh, if we are off road, maybe the chances of hitting, you know, meeting anybody is, is less. But maybe when we get to the road, we can maybe try to to walk instead of going on the jeep. 
So head east first then? And I would continue, I would follow the river all the way down. Maybe but, without, as... but, without the, but without the jeep? No, with the jeep, as, because I think uh, we can do it. Yeah. I mean, if we look at the terrain type for travel, I think we can definitely Let do me it. open the... Um... On the GM. Terrain it takes us type, longer. Yeah. Um, okay. It, it basically it says that it takes you so to move through one uh, wood style it takes you I think it's half wood so okay driving takes, minus one okay all right yeah so basically it, it takes you longer to go through it so you see the combat speed is six three so basically uh, we only move I think off road is the three so basically it would take us wait, 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 hold on where are you looking right now the three uh, on the gear on the gear of the jeep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where. I'm not sure where that's where you see in the PDF. Yes, 117. <laughs> so I'm looking at Foundry. Uh, <laughs> gear for the Jeep. Right. Gotcha. Yep. I'm there now. So basically, you can see the speed of the yeah. of, of the Jeep. Uh, let me just share. Um, let me share the the PDF as well because I can do that. Uh, one second. So you can see here we've got the US military vehicles. We have yeah. the Jeep, which is. I've just lost it. It's the M151. Uh, uh, the page is 117. Sorry. Oh, I'm one page too far. Yeah. Um, so it's this M151, which is here, the first one on the list here, then. Yep. Um, yeah. I'll go scroll. So basically, this, this you have, if you are in. in uh, yeah. Yeah, it's right there. So you see, we have two speeds, six and three. So six is when we are on the road. So we actually can't yeah. drive very fast on the road. Three is when we are off the road, meaning that on woods, basically it would take us two movement. So we divide by two. So basically we could only move yeah. one X more or less. Okay. So basically it would take us a whole shift to go to forest. Which is, which is how long it would take us to move on foot as well. Because we can move two shifts um, through open terrain on foot, or in hard terrain like um, in a forest, it takes us half that. So, yeah, cool. All right. So we can actually drive through um, the, the forest. Let's do that then. Um, so we're going to spend the entire first shift. So it takes us all the way through the daytime to make our way through the forest. I'm not thinking we should roll for an encounter because this is our starting hex. Um, but traveling through the hex certainly can like be the first the first bit of time. It's still raining. The shift's taken us an entire shift. It's now sort of like um, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., getting into the evening as we make our way out of the um, out of the forest. What are we going to do, <laughs> do now? Um, we basically are entering a new hex. So there's a, there are a number of things we have to do. First of all, we roll for a new encounter every new shift. And we've entered a new hex here, so we're gonna roll. We're gonna actually roll for our first encounter right now, as we move down into this into this hex. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more too, as well, so it's just a little bit more localized. Hmm. Well, first, uh, if we look at the sort of rules, the procedure is first roll for the weather change. Oh yeah, roll for the weather change. Exactly. Yeah. That's um, the, the first step. So why don't you why don't you roll that, Tony? Roll a d6. Yeah. And it basically gets worse if he rolls a one. It gets better if he rolls a six. Otherwise, it stays the same, I believe, right? Four. Yeah. So that means it does, nothing happens to it, right? It just stays no. the same? Yeah. And then uh, assign and resolve tasks for each PC. So basically, we are going to continue moving. Or well, the tasks... That we... Yeah. There's a, you've got them in the um, GM to, in the GM screen. Yes. Right? Yeah. yes. So let me just uh, open that very quickly. So here are the shift actions that we can do. Um, well, do we want to keep driving or do we want to actually make camp? I guess that's the question. Um, it's the evening, right? Some... Well, it's like just the start of the evening. Yeah, the day's, the day's ending. Probably we could. I think it would be a good idea because we have been driving away. We are scared in shock of the, what happened. You know, probably we were driving like very quiet, like just thinking of, of the massacre that happened behind us. And then probably is the, the first moment that we probably can slow the car and maybe at the jeep and, and think, what are we going to do? Maybe it's it's a good moment to prepare the camp, maybe have a chat about what's going to be the plan. Yeah. That's how I would see it. Like, uh, it's kind of the scene is like, we need to have a plan. <laughs> kind of just be driving like yeah. in any direction, like headless chicken. <laughs> Sounds good. So um, 
Yeah, so we'll make we'll stop and make camp then. Yeah. Sounds good. So procedure then for making camp. I'm gonna show the PDF on this as well. Give me one second to find it. There we go. So let me turn that on. Um, down here on the bottom right. So finding camp. Uh, this is kind of there's a lot of uh, sim similarities to Forbidden Lands in Twilight 2000 with the travel rules. Um, but basically, we make a survival roll, and the survival roll determines um, whether we find a place to shelter. And if we fail, then we sleep anyway, but we roll for a mishap. Okay? And the mishaps are here. It's a d10 roll, um, but that's basically it. So I think the way to do this then is to... And we don't have the mishap um, or uh, macro set up in Foundry yet again, so we'll just roll a d10 and look it up manually. Um, but yeah. I guess so for I will, survival, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will propose it because, you know, I was actually training you for all these kind of things, so my guess is that I'm much better than you. I mean, you can show it probably. Like I'm showing it, yeah. Character sheets. yeah. But I think I have better survival than you. Um, yeah, you're, you've got a B and C for survival, I've got a B and D. So, yeah. Um, what am I going to... So the, then I have to declare what I'm going to be doing while you're making camp, and I guess what I'm going to be doing is possibly... Um, scrounging or foraging uh, foraging might be a good idea actually um we're near a river i could do fishing i don't have any fishing equipment <laughs> no. um <clears throat> yeah i think i'm going to or i could hunt i think i'm going to forage first um, and foraging works very similarly to making camp. In fact, all these things that these options that you have here, you're making a roll, and if you fail the roll, there's a mishap. Um, if you don't, then you maybe, succeed maybe, and you get something. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, would you be? You know, we we just left this place, and we are both, as I said, like in shock still. And and I just said, okay, I'm gonna try to make camp. We're gonna be safe. I'm just try, gonna try to cover the jeep with branches and etc. And, and probably what I would be asking you more uh, instead of foraging because we still have right rations. It's more you keep helping, watch. keep or watch, keeping watch. Okay. Just to see that we are not being followed. If you see other people. Yeah, coming. that's a good idea actually. Yeah, we don't need to scrounge right now. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's a good I, idea. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I would propose. Like, I'm, I'm trying to keep everything yeah. well hidden, and, and maybe because the idea is also like we need to decide if we make a fire or not. And I guess I wouldn't be making a fire, so we probably might get cold. So that we we'll come later for for the sleeping. Um, so that's a good thing because um, the this determines whether if if an encounter happens, whether we spot it in time, right? So it's going to be my recon roll against uh, spotting an encounter. And I think this is where we roll our first encounter now. So, if, uh, But basically, just looking at the procedure again to, to flash this up. Um, it's not here, sorry. Uh, the procedure for solo play is you roll for the weather change. We've done that. We assign and resolve tasks for each of us. We've done that. Um, we draw an encounter card. So that's what we're going to do now. So we have the encounter cards here ready to go. I'm going to open up the chat here. We're gonna click. And, we, and we don't roll for the for the for what we are doing for the task. We do it later, no? The encounter. I think the encounter happens before you. Um... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure. Oh no, it says assign and resolve the tasks. No, you're right. So <coughs> yeah, I think. Uh, so why don't you roll your survival roll? That's right. Roll your survival yeah. roll then for uh, making camp. Keep it so open. Uh, so basically, it's my intelligence, which is a d10, d10 plus. Um, Ah, you actually, you can, can just, just click. Forgot, you can click on your screen. Forgot, yeah. I, I forgot yeah. that it's working. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> we, we should probably mention that we are using the Foundry module. We did it the other day, probably. Yeah. Yeah, the for, found, for... this Foundry model, module we were using is um, old. I think it's for the. It might be for the alpha or maybe the beta. Um, it hasn't been updated. It's. Um, yeah. I'm not even sure it's meant to be <laughs> used yet. Um, so. It will. It is being developed, and it will be um, an official release eventually. But we're using kind of an older, slightly out of date one, so some things aren't working in it. Um, anyway, like for example, if we go to the gear section, um, when you look at, if I open up a, a weapon here, no, no, we'll get rid of that. Never mind. Anyway, some of the stats are slightly off. Like um, they all have a reload stat, which is A through F, and in the final version of the rules, it's a number. Um, for example, it's this reload here, sorry, where it says A. 
Um, I haven't changed those values. I, I haven't checked actually in the alpha or the beta what that number meant and used them. I probably could do that, but I'm just we're just ignoring that for now. We'll look it up if we need to. Yeah. Anyway. Right. So I'm drawing for survival and I got two successes. Oh, wow. So again, if you've not played this game before, um, it, <clears throat> it doesn't use dice pools. It only uses dice pools for ammo. Um, unlike other Year Zero Engine games, you roll two polyhedrals and you you need to get six or higher on each one. Um, each time you get a six or higher on each dice, it counts as one success. If you get a ten or higher, it counts as two successes. And normally you just need one success, so rolling a six or higher on either of those dice works. Um, if you're rolling something like, uh, for example, Bill's character sheet is open here. If he was to roll close combat, he doesn't have any skill in that. That's fine, he still rolls his base strength a d10. So he could still get two successes if he got a 10 on that d10. Um, or a 6, 7, 8, or 9, he would get a, um, a single success. So you can still roll even if you're only rolling one dice. Die, I should say. Cool. Two successes on making camp. So you've made your camp. Um, I'm doing recon. Uh, let me roll my recon roll, actually, as well, just to see if I spot anything coming. Um... I don't have anything in recon, actually, so it's just going to be my, my bare intelligence here. So I click that, there's no modifier, and I don't get any successes. <laughs> and now I'm going to roll for, the, we're going to pull the encounter card. Oops. And the encounter card is for my country. It's a civilian faction, um, the Ace of Clubs. The number is, the number of PCs times two guards in the daytime. PC times one guards in darkness, and I think because this is happening in the middle of the evening shift, let's take the middle of that. So let's say yeah. three, maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, and two d six times five inhabitants overall. All right, and here's the here's the encounter. There's a village of two d six um, houses. Do you want to roll the two d six, Tony? Sure. Surrounded by barbed wire and sandbags, guards have AKMs. So six houses, surrounded by barbed wire and sandbags. Guards have AKMs. Um, an AKM is, uh, if you're familiar with an AK-47, looks like it's like a more, the most modern version of that in this game at this point in time. Um, but it looks kind of like an AK-47, if you're familiar with role-playing, uh, with any kind of video games that involve shooting things. Um, two reloads and a frag grenade each. So we're saying there are three guards, right? So the three guards, that's what they're armed with. And they have one RPG-16 with two reloads, so they've got two rockets on their RPG, or two grenades, I should say, on their rocket on their RPG. RPG being meaning um, rocket propelled grenade, um, and an 82 millimeter mortar, with four high explosive rounds. So they're okay. They're relatively well armed. Mm -hmm. Villagers are very suspicious of foreign soldiers, but maybe reasoned or even traded with. Uh, okay, so how do we fit this? Because we probably didn't stop next to to to, to houses, right? And how, how do we incorporate this into this area that we are? Um, I mean, they've got guards, right? So maybe as we were setting up, um... maybe you started moving and try to see to recon if there was anything. Maybe we were yeah, maybe I was to kind pass. of yeah, and maybe they because my recon, I failed my recon roll. Um, okay. I they spotted me before I spotted them. Yeah, I'm even still back in the camp, probably hiding in the jeep and everything. Yeah, you just oh no, no. <laughs> well, it's, it's also raining heavily, right? Oh, in fact, that that might have actually should have possibly have come into um, account for my recon roll with the um, with the with the bad weather. Anyway, I failed it anyway. It's not gonna can't get worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're gonna be sus they're very suspicious. Here I am armed with my M16 on like patrolling around. And I imagine they're going to not want me to get any closer to their settlement, so they're going to shout at me. And they're probably noticing that I'm in, um, you know, American fatigues, um, U.S. fatigues. They're going to shout for me to, um, in English. Um, I'm guessing they're Polish. Yeah. But those, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining they probably speak some English. Mm. Drop your weapon! We have you surrounded, something like that. And then I'm going to like be like, okay, what am I gonna do? I'm all by myself here. <laughs> I'll lay I'll lay my, my weapon in um on the ground and uh kind of put my hands up and say, um I, thinking if it was if it was the Russians, they probably would have just shot me instantly, right? So can't be that bad. It's probably it's probably 
somebody who's uh, we can can be reasoned with. So I put my hands up, and I try and talk as loud as I can so that um, Bill can hear me. And maybe maybe um, Bill can make a recon roll recon of roll. your own so to see if thinking. you can hear me. That is raining heavy. And there should be a, a negative modifier for sure because of the rain. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like if it's raining heavily, probably uh, yeah. Let's, so I would probably so my recon is basically B, which is my intelligence, and I have a C, so a D10 and a D8. So I would just probably pull down. Uh, so it's two D8 probably. So I, well, I think you get you click on it. There's a modifier button, through. right? So I think yeah, it I should can put do it just a minus one on the modifier. Yeah. So basically, I got one success. Yeah. So that one that's been highlighted means if you wanted to push the roll, um, that it would cause you some um, cause you some harm. So anyway. So I heard. So you heard. You heard me shouting. Don't shoot. Okay, so what I will probably do is again um, probably move sneakily to your position. So again, I would be using uh, recon to move into your position. And I guess because it's raining, it should be easier for me probably to to move uh, to that position. So maybe having a, a plus one. I mean, I think it is a modifier when it's raining. Do you need to? Do you need to roll? Ah, oh, you're rolling. Maybe it's like a stealth. Stealth roll, right? Yeah, because yeah. usually when you are yeah. when you are in based on terrain types, uh, there is you know if you look if you open the GM and you look at the combat and you look at terrain types, there is this infiltration, which is basically how easy it is to hide and on this and move. So, for example, if we are in forest, I will have a plus one. Yeah, which we are. I think we are in. It's a mix of forest and open. So I probably would stick to the woods. So I will have a plus one to my to my recon. And, and I don't know if I, if I could get another plus one because of the weather. Probably, I think that makes sense. Um, and I'll yeah. I'll roll for the civilian um, recon as well. Yeah. So basically, I will have a plus two. And I think it does make sense to give them a negative modifier for the recon when you're also getting a plus modifier for the weather. So we'll just give you the plus, and they'll just roll a straight up recon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So you got two successes. They got no successes. Okay. So basically, I approach your position, hiding in the woods. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm probably, uh, yeah, I didn't say if I took <laughs> my my M21. That's <laughs> should have thought about that. <laughs> so maybe, uh, yeah, I guess I can. We can say that I have it on me. Although if I was preparing, yeah, probably you would have you would have heard. Like it would have been close to hand, right? Yeah, For yeah, sure. Right, I think it's fine to say you've got it on you. Yeah, and, and I'm just sneaking through the woods, probably with a rifle, you know, at hand, and then I just approach your position, just trying to see what I see. And maybe at the time is when maybe you can continue from them. I just move. You you shout it. I was able yeah. to move little by little, and you continue. So I'm gonna actually. I think I'm gonna roll for the settlement generator, just okay. to get a little bit of um detail on this Labor. settlement. And we can yeah. ignore the bits that conflict with the um, encounter before, yeah. um, but we're in a rural we're in a rural area, so we, it's a farmstead. Although we said it had six buildings, um, but we can say it's kind of like a, a large a large farm with a bunch of outbuildings. Perhaps that's where the six buildings are. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> character six one two are the same. A tattered flag. We'll say that it has a tattered Polish flag flying above it, um, and there are some wrecked cars that are that are there as well. And the wrecked cars maybe are a bit more like um, I live in the countryside, and there are a lot of um, I'm surrounded by farmhouses and mm -hmm. um, farmsteads, if you want to use that term. And there are quite a few houses that have wrecked cars in their in their like um, in their yards. So that's what I imagine. Like there's like a tractor that has like a really old tractor that like the wheels aren't on and stuff like that. And there's some old cars mm -hmm. that aren't working, etc. Rather than bombed out cars, maybe. Yeah. Um, their attitude is that they're visionaries. Hmm. So that could work out interestingly. Um, their problem is that they have a tyrannical leader. Okay. We've got the right faction. The faction is that they're civilian refugees. Okay. So that, that kind of fits in that these are refugees who have come here, Polish refugees. Hmm. And I mean, yeah, go yeah, on. Maybe this, maybe this, you know, they arrive to this place and there is this guy that is trying to control everyone and, and taking all the let's say all the all the food and all the rations say you know i know what's best for everyone i'm gonna keep keeping the rations and you know you need to you know, we'll protect you and uh, we'll take care of you but uh, we need to share and 
maybe he's controlling them in, in a way. That's why he has these three guards probably that are kind of the only ones with weapons. So. Yeah, that sounds good. So maybe there's like a group of marauders who are, who've seized this farmstead. And we see at the bottom here, the event is refugees. So maybe they're because of what's happening in Kalish. They're being flooded with refugees from the fighting at the moment. And yeah. the tyrannical leader is basically saying like, they have this vision for, um, in fact, one of the factions in the book are um, like a Polish um, faction who want to basically, inst like are very um, anti-foreign, anti-foreigner and want to like reestablish uh, Poland as a, as a country. So they're kind of like, um, again <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're they're kind of not really um necessarily super aggressive but they also are definitely not super friendly <laughs> mm -hmm. um they're marauders basically so i think we can probably safely say that that's who these are and looking at the if we scroll up a bit to the um to the encounter card as well it's also saying that the villagers are suspicious of foreign soldiers that makes sense. So I think we're going to kind of roll with that. And, um, you know, I've put my hands up. I've said don't shoot. And we'll say of the... Th they had three guards. We'll say two of them maybe um, step forward towards me. Now, we don't know any of this. This is just what we're rolling to determine a little bit of detail around this site. Maybe I can just see um, the Polish flag flying between some trees up at, like, through the rain a little bit um, ahead in the distance. And maybe, like, the fence post or something like that. But remember, it's raining hard. Um, and I'm more focused on these two guards who are stepping towards me. Okay. So, what are you doing while that happens? Well, I don't want to give away my position, but I still don't know what's, what that this, uh, this guy is uh, doing on you. And, uh, uh, did you drop your, your weapon? Probably I've dropped it, yeah. 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 Um, it's a complicated situation. <laughs> I just will probably try to move closer and maybe be aiming with my rifle in case I, I need to shoot at these guys. And and, and I will see. I, I try to hear if if they listen and, and try to see if they are speaking to talking to you back in English and what they are yeah. trying to tell you, what they are they asking of you. Before okay, I, uh, so I think the first thing I'm going to do, because again, because they haven't shot me and they've since see I'm wearing American fatigues, I'm assuming they're not Russian. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm an American soldier. I don't want to. I don't want to bother you. I just want to. I just want to be on my way. I'm. I'm leaving. I'm fleeing from Kalish. Maybe we can trade. <laughs> um, and this is where I have another thing to roll, which is this NPC generator. Oh, no, hold on a second. Um, we did say that they they, they might be possible for them to be reasoned or even traded with. So this yeah, is where yeah, we ask the... I, I guess probably what you should do is probably more a kind of persuasion role, just to see if you can persuade these. Well, I think that the first thing to do is to... There, we have this thing called the Helpful or Hazardous Oracle. Okay. And that can tell that's meant to be used to tell us whether a faction or a group is helpful or hazardous toward us before I do the, before I do the manipulation, right? Okay. So let's roll that first. Mildly helpful, so that's that's good. Um, so maybe these maybe these ones have also had some run-ins with the Russians, and they're they're pretty anti-Russian themselves at the moment. So they're, you know, I say the magic words of of trade, of faction, uh, sorry, of yeah, of of trading with them, and yeah, they're mildly helpful. So now I'm gonna roll my manipulation. Persuasion. Huh? Persuasion, sorry, yep. <laughs> um, I'm not going to put any modifiers with this, but I do have um, PSYOPs, which gives... They, sorry, they, they, I get well, a plus one. They, they are more than you, so basically you need to take into account if they are more than you. You roll Persuasion, yep. they, they have bigger numbers than you. It's a minus one, right? Yeah. So it's a minus one because there's more of them, more of them, but I get a plus one because I have PSYOPs, where I've, I can use a plus one to Persuasion to manipulate. So we're just, it's just a straight up um, persuasion roll. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, all right. This is, this is cool. So I'm like, do you want to, maybe I got something to trade. And they, they come right up to me. One of like, one of them stands back a bit. The other one comes right up. He reaches down, he grabs my gun and he pulls it away from me. Okay. I, and in broken I, I, English, gonna... he says, 
We'll take this, and you're going to give us everything you have. Okay. Uh, fuck's sake. Okay. Uh, that, uh, well, mildly that helpful. Probably... Maybe that's a bit too extreme. Yeah. No, maybe that, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that because they're mildly helpful, right? Um, they're going to say, "Come with." You're going to come with us and speak to the boss. And then he kind of, he's got my gun, he kind of sl slings my gun over his shoulder, has his AKM pointed at me, and he kind of gestures to follow him into the, um, into okay. the village. Uh, and in that moment, I I, uh, I would come out of the woods. I mean, I'm not going to let you go in alone. <laughs> right, it's the not smartest thing to do, but whatever. So I will just come out. Hey, friends. <laughs> Instantly, um, they, like, one of them kind of uh, <laughs> turns, his, turns his gun on you. The other one is kind of, I guess, stay, staying back away from me and kind of is kind of covering both of us slightly with, with his rifle, his high vision. Yeah. So I basically come out with my hands up. I have my, well, my pistol and my, my M21 like, on my back. And I'm like, hey, this is Rick. This is, uh, this is my friend, okay? So uh, please, everyone, be careful. We can be reasonable here, right? Eh? And one of them, the one that's close to me, turns to me and says, how many more are there? <laughs> it's just me. It's just the two of us. Um, I'm going to use the oracle, the yes, no oracle. I'm going to say, does he believe me? Mm, okay. <laughs> Life saving. Okay, that's in like an extreme yes. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, and life saving is kind of like the most extreme result you can get with a... Um, yeah, well, like a like a critical yes. So he believes that there's just the two of us, and maybe he feels a little bit bad that he's doing this to us. Maybe I mean we're getting kind of conflicting results from the oracle here, um, but he he doesn't. He basically gestures to you as well, yeah. and doesn't take your weapon off you. But he needs to realize that you know I could have killed them probably from the distance. Yeah, maybe I mean I'm sure he probably realizes that. Yeah. I mean I came out like uh, like in, with in a peaceful manner. And yeah. I had a, a rifle on my back. I could have definitely killed them three. Yeah. And and and, and that's it. So I'm, I'm trying to to show that, that to them, and I think maybe that's why it's life saving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That seems reasonable, <laughs> and maybe this, maybe that guard who is closest to you now feels a little bit, um, not indebted to you, but is kind of like realizes like, okay, I could have been dead right now, yeah, and I'm not. So maybe maybe these guys can be reasoned with, even though the other one's a bit more like, oh shit, we got we got two two soldiers coming into our camp. Um, I invest in civilian clothes actually. I, I, oh yeah, okay. But you're wearing, but you're you're carrying, you know, some serious equipment. Nah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So they take us in to the in, into their farmstead, mm -hmm. and we notice, I guess, straight away that there are a lot of refugees. Um, yeah. Kind of most of them like this buildings as we as we determined before, but they you can see like in all the windows and kind of crowded around the doors watching us as we're coming in. Um, there's just clearly, re you know, refugees, people who've fled, they haven't got anything with them, um, quite disheveled. And we don't see a lot of soldiers, right? We yeah. don't see any, like, oh, just the two that brought us in, and then they take us to the largest building, which I guess would be the farmhouse. Yeah. And we go inside to meet their leader. Ukrainian. Yeah. yeah, and I think we're gonna stop it there. <laughs> it felt like uh, that didn't last very long. It's um, it's already ten. Yeah, oh, it's five. <laughs> it's five two. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, that was fast. But it leaves it. It leaves it on a bit of a cliffhanger, which is nice. Um, and I think you know this is the, being the first session. Maybe we can go on for a little bit longer. Maybe we can generate a little bit of information about this leader. Um, maybe just. Let's take it. Let's take it a few, like a little bit further forward, maybe. Um, okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah, because you have this NPC generator, right? I do. Yeah. And so we'll roll that. Up, that is a very you know like, tyrannical leader. <laughs> well, we'll see what it says. Um, I yeah. mean, it's already we've already heard that it's that the person's tyrannical. Is it mm. a is it going to be um, a man or a woman? Uh, I don't know. Or yeah, let's roll it. Well, I've the, I've got to pick like I've got to pick a feminine or a masculine name. Okay, so one d four, one two. Um, uh, 
uh, woman, uh, C4, uh, male. male. Okay. Tomash. He looks <laughs> smug. His goal is to find a home. Ah, oh, he's found a home, hasn't he? Okay. Um, so maybe we, we can expand on this a little bit. So Tomash is um, pretty pretty confident, even though he's only got three guards with him. Um, and we can we've already said that the idea behind this this group was to um, is like to reinstate Poland's sovereignty as a nation. Um, he's part of that faction. Maybe he's not the main guy in this faction. Um, by the way, this is creating an, an instant journal in entry. I can see you're writing things down. Ah, yeah. So if we go to the journals, there's Tomas is now there. Um, okay. But yeah, um, I think I think that kind of makes sense. So Tomas, we he's smug, right? So he's he's overconfident. Um, they bring us they bring us inside, and he will probably instantly notice that you are still armed. And he says, you speak Polish, right? I speak Russian, actually. Okay. So in Polish, he says something quickly in Polish to the other two, maybe. And they have this they have this back and forth discussion. Um, well, one of them is kind of like, kind of like covering us a little bit with his, with his gun. And then, um, yeah, what do you think? Ah, uh, uh, my guess is that they, he was probably talking with the guys like, well, "What are you doing with these guys? You should uh, have taken the weapon off of 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 this this of of, of me, basically." And and he's just uh, worried that maybe the other guys like, "Well, actually, you know, they came with good intentions. They wanted to trade, but uh, and then the guy is probably just gonna look at us, uh, Tomash, and say, "So, what are you doing in my in my town?" Are you really are, do you really want to to trade or did you come here to take everything from us something like this I don't know we didn't we didn't attack we're just we're leave we're fleeing from Kalish because there's been some fighting I'm sure you you've heard of it I mean you've got all these refugees here right and we're just passing through we don't we your guards stopped us and brought us in we weren't going to attack we don't want to attack you we're happy to trade if if you have stuff that you can trade, but it looks like with all your refugees, you probably you probably can't afford to to give us any water or food. I would imagine. Yeah, and then I mentioned, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we come in peace. Uh, your guards uh, took my my friend, and you know I could have killed your guards in from outside, but you know I'm friendly. I didn't. I I, I don't want to. I mean no harm to you or your settlement by just passing through trying away from the Russians probably you also don't want, you don't like the Russians like right <laughs> I don't know <laughs> we don't like anyone who's not Polish you're all in, you're all invaders you've made my you've made my country into a wasteland right I'm gonna roll I've, I've got an idea for something okay so we've we've already determined that um that one of the guards is kind of going to be arguing on our behalf, right? Okay. So yeah. let's roll for um, help for hazardous again, I think, for Tomash. And okay. we'll shift it a little bit more towards the friendly bit. So if it's like mildly un um, unfriendly, whatever it says, then we can shift that a little bit more towards being neutral, that? right? Because the guard's kind of vouching for us. But if it's like really extra bad, then it's, it's not going to go well for us. Okay, so he's mildly helpful as well. Um, so that's good. So the guards, so like you, like us telling him, you know, that we were just passing through. We, you know, we could have, we could have attacked. We didn't attack. We're just interested in trade, etc. I think he's gonna relax. Um, and I think we're gonna end it with a rumor that he's going to. Um, I think as a sign of of goodwill for you know, he says, okay, okay. Um, we don't want have any. We don't want to have a fight with you. We can't afford to waste any any ammo in a, any kind of fight or anything like that. We need to save our we need to save our resources for when we when we really need them. Um, so he, they give my my rifle back to me. Okay. Um, and then we ask if you know 
I actually you know, offer to, to give them some some um, ammo as currency in exchange yeah. for um, any news that they might have heard. As a sign of kind of like, thank you very much for yeah. not for not killing us. I here's like a bit of here's a bit of currency. Maybe we can have a bit of an exchange. And um, we're gonna roll. So can you roll a D10? Sure. And I'm going to open up the referee's guide. Cool. A two. So I'm gonna show the PDF here. Uh, we got rumors here. And the number two rumor is, the Soviets have amassed a small army prepared to take a city in the area. The city needs all the help it can get, but the Soviets are paying more. They have food, gold, weapons, you name it. Can we pass up such a wealth of supplies? Do they want to get involved in a major battle again, just after the great loss at Kalish? Hmm, okay, interesting. And do we know what it is? And we could we can decide what that's going to be. Um, so the which cities in the area? Uh, maybe we can do it. The, the one that is nearby, no, Slotshu. Um, Slotshu, Slotchev. I think Slotchev. Slotchev. Yeah. Slotchev. <laughs> yeah. Probably you speak better Polish than me. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe. It's, uh, no, why don't we roll? Why don't we roll for it? There's a couple around us, right? So we've got. Um, let's do. Let's start with. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's roll a d6. We'll start with um, Sierra Daj as a one, and we'll go okay. around in um, clockwise. Uh, okay, so uh, until just a d6 Ostrov? until Ostrov. Ostrov. Ostrov, okay. yeah. Four. One, two, three. So Kepno. Kepno. Yeah, right. Aha. All right. Well, we wanted to go to Kepno. That was our first um, destination. So the Soviets are amassing an army to be prepared to take that city, um, and these maybe these. These well, Tomash and his guards are from that city, right? Maybe they've okay. left to to kind of go on a foraging run, because if you look at the road, it's like it wouldn't have taken it would have taken just like a day or two to get to this farmhouse, maybe, mm -hmm. um, or a day really. And they found this farmhouse, and like these refugees were pouring in, and they're kind of like, well, maybe we should help these refugees out. Um, I don't really I don't really see much of a tyrannical leader here in Tomash, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he tells us that they saw some Soviets, like they managed to get past them without the Soviets stopping them, uh, but they saw some Soviets amassing maybe to the north of Kep of Kepno in the in the forest there. Hmm. Um, and they want us to help. They want us to help them. Maybe they want to stop to, the Soviets. May, may, I don't know if because it's true, like stopping the Soviets if they have a big army is way too much. Maybe maybe we should go more with the other with the other with the other idea, like getting resources from them. You know, trying to steal. Maybe this is more like a like a stealing run, you know, instead of attacking them. Because you know, we only have three guards plus Tomash, so that's four, and so they cannot really go and against this army. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Well, we could we could get into. Army. They haven't they haven't attacked Kepno yet. So theoretically, we could go to Kepno to help to help them fight. So we would provide five additional, you know, fighters. Mm. They've got AKMs, which are which are good weapons. Um, yeah. Kind of so we could we could help them if it comes to a fight. But I'm obviously the Russians will have probably have some serious yeah. gear. Although it said they had RPGs and stuff too. So um, maybe we could do more like a. It, the idea would be more like a guerrilla, like hit and run tactic. They just want to bother them, and because you know mm. it's not a big group, so maybe they just want to. If they can immobilize a tank or, or any other mechanized uh, vehicle, maybe that's good enough. Or I mean, I think we need to decide which one. Maybe either is is this like a getting the resources, or are we trying to do kind of guerrilla tactics? I think we're going to we're going to s decide that we're going to decide that now and then end the stream. <laughs> <laughs> or are we gonna we're gonna leave it open ended? Um, that's the big question. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we can even ask the, the people on the. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, like if you've got any ideas, like what do you. Let's let's turn it over to the live chat. In fact, let's leave it to the comments as well, because we've got two weeks to yeah. play next. So <laughs> drop a comment in. Drop a comment in the. Um, to the video. Don't leave it in the chat here. Yeah. And let us know whether you think we should help Kepno. Uh, like def defend themselves against the Russians, or whether we should sneak behind enemy lines and try and. Um, you know. Steal some of their shit, and do some guerrilla like some guerrilla <laughs> tactics. So leave, drop a comment in the um, 
uh, sorry, yeah, drop a comment uh, for the into this into the comments section of the video and let us know. <laughs> and we're gonna yeah. stop there. So uh, we'll make we'll base our decision based on on some audience, uh, you know, feedback. Comments, yeah. <laughs> And that's it. So uh, also, if you have any feedback on what you thought of this video, um, it's a much shorter format. I mean, one hour really flew by, really. Um, but if you feel like that's easier to keep track of and easier to watch, that'd be good for us to know as well. If you have any advice for us on solo role, on solo gaming or, um, you know, should we have used the oracles a bit more, um, whatever. Feel free to leave it uh, in the comments. We will be picking the pace up next time. So there was a little bit of, a, again, a slight intro when we were starting. That won't be the case necessarily so much next time. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, also, if you can, if you can, it would really help the channel to grow to hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video as well. That's it. Thank you very much, everyone who came to watch live. And we'll catch you in two weeks' time. Awkward pause while I'm looking for my farewell card. There we go. Oh, one other last thing. Um, if you want to come chat to us on social media, the links are in the description. They'll be coming up in the farewell card that's coming up in a second. Um, but we're both very active on Discord. So if you use Discord, that's the best place to catch us. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.